Good afternoon. Welcome back to another rendition of the BNH virtual event space. You have tuned in to Keeping It Simple, how to create a dramatic portrait almost anywhere. Almost anywhere, right, Rich? We're, we're, almost anywhere. Almost anywhere. And, and to prove that, Rich is like, I just showed up like 10 minutes ago. We're setting up. He's, he's showing us that we're really doing this on the fly. So he's going to put all of his expertise to the test here today. And for that, he's got the wonderful backing of some Stella Pro Lighting. And I would like to thank them as the sponsor for today's event. And we do have the wonderful Janine from Stella Pro hanging on in the background there. So if you guys do have any technical questions, any questions about Stella Pro gear in general, we can get that answered for you. But Rich, I want to welcome you. And uh, I would love to welcome your, your wonderful model, Thero, back there. Thank you for helping us out with this. And I'm going to turn it over to you in a minute, but I want to invite everybody to get your questions. And this is the kind of content that I personally love, Rich, because I, I don't want to know what you can do with six lights and a $4,000 studio rental. I want to know what can I do no matter where I'm at. So that's what we're talking about today, right? Correct. And and I think, too, it's, in, it's important to, I think a lot of people, you know, you have the natural light photographers and then you have the strobists and the, and there's a lot of debate back and forth but about which is better but the i feel like a lot of people hesitate using strobes or artificial lighting because of situations like this where you show up to a room and it, this is a pure white it's white everywhere and trying to control that light is always a challenge so i always say the number one thing you can do with learning strobes is have a good poker face so that it looks like you know what you're doing in front of your clients so you don't have that kind of, cause they're paying you for the work and you want to make sure you know what you're doing. So um, that's typically what I tell people when it comes to uh, strobe lights or artificial lighting. Awesome. I love your approach. I just got to say that Rich, I love your approach. It's super matter of fact, down to earth. And I think it really resonates with what all a lot of our viewers want to see. Our, our viewers want to see this non-pretentious, like, Hey, I can do this too. So that being said, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to let you do your thing. And of course, any questions yeah. you guys have, feel free to get them in. So one of the things that I try to start right when someone comes into the studio is I try to figure out why I'm doing the photo before I figure out how I'm going to do the photo. Um, I do know my gear and I know most of it. The situations that will change are going to be your subject. And it's also going to be the location that you're shooting at. Um, we've done lawyer headshots where the law firm's in the middle of a, a renovated house and they want to do headshots and the only clean wall room they have is in an old uh, renovated kitchen. So we have to cram in there. We have to get our lights in there. And what's cool about the Stella lights and the reflex lights is that they are small and compact. So you can set these up. They can sit on a counter. You don't have to bring in a light stand. Most of these light stands are going to have a base. These are pretty tiny, but they have a base of about three feet radius. Um, so you're gonna, you're still gonna take up, that's gonna take up some of your room. Um, so we try to keep the gear as minimal as possible. And then with the subject, what we wanna do with the subject is when a client comes in, we wanna ask them why they're coming to get their picture taken. What are we creating? Um, because, you know, Thurl's wearing this sailor outfit, it's pretty stylized. So you don't wanna come with some ideas that are gonna kind of conflict that look, or maybe you do, but uh, the idea is you wanna try to figure out what they're doing. And even if they're an accountant or a lawyer, figure out what kind of lawyer they are, figure out what kind of personality they have. They may be the fun kind of lawyer, or they may be the dry humor kind of lawyer, but you wanna figure out why you're gonna create before you figure out how you're gonna create. So with this lighting setup, we're gonna we were gonna try to recreate the photo that we took uh, for the promo image, but that was done in a smaller, darker studio um, that had darker walls. This again, this studio is very white and bright, so we're gonna get a lot of bounce light. We have a we have these massive windows. You can see it on this camera here uh, that we have light kind of bleeding in over here and behind Caleb over there. There's some light coming in as well. So these are gonna be a little bit lighter than the ones that we took before. But part of the drama too is also directing the talent or the subject on how to pre present what they're doing. So he also brought his pipe that he he used in another uh, photo that we took right there. Yeah. 
So I'm going to take a couple shots. These are going to dump right into Lightroom. They're going to be pretty much straight out of camera. There is a slight camera adjustment to it on a preset, um, but we're going to shoot some with this. Uh, this is a 12 by 56 Octabox. This is the Bowens mount for the, the Stella lights, the reflex, um, which is pretty good. And I've got a grid on here to kind of direct and, and channel that light. I could turn that oh, over here. So we've got a grid on here that we're going to hit them with as well. And I want this to be to control a little bit more of this light. I'm having this really close to my subject so that I don't get a lot of spill from this light. So go right about here. And I'm shooting this with the uh, this is the 85 millimeter. This is a Nikon Z7 II uh, that I just switched to full mirrorless, which has been awesome. So let me have you turn your head a little bit this way, Thurl and lean into the light just a little bit, right about there. And then turn your nose a little bit more this way. Great, just like that. And let's go here. Great. Love it. Let me just check these real quick. We're getting that darker background on these. So I'm gonna crouch down here and, and show you guys real quick. We would just, Bring these up just a little bit. And I'm not really, uh, my style isn't really shooting tethered as much, and I don't focus too much on the technical when it comes to shooting. Um, I try to, you know, with the new mirrorless, you can view this stuff in camera and get your lighting as close as possible. I am a very Photoshop heavy type of photographer, but I also try to get as much perfect in camera as I can. Um, and with the newer cameras, you can really push the limits of what you can do with this. But we're getting a nice little gray background there. On something like this, I would probably wind up cutting him out just a little bit and darkening that background if I don't have much control over the environment. And the reason why I don't typically shoot tethered is because I have to bring a bunch of other gear on location. It's going to take me away from actually focusing on the client who is now sitting here awkwardly watching me talk to you guys. So... Uh, let's try a little bit more of a lean in a little bit closer to the camera. I'm going to move the V flat. Now a V flat, we typically wouldn't bring on location either. This is kind of a big piece of gear as well. These are good because they break down, but as you can see, I almost knocked the talon out. So let's go now, there. Rich, Rich and looking yeah. at that first, in, in looking at that first shot, what are you looking for when you get your, your first shot? on a shoot like this, are you looking more at, you know, the, the shadows, the light, is there anything in particular that is stands out to you that you want to look for on what you so need the, to maybe correct on? What I usually look for immediately is how the light's falling on his, like on his face in general, and then where the okay. spill's going. And I kind of do a top down glance. I do want to look for how detailed my shadows are, or how dark my shadows are. I go for a, a little bit more painterly. It, I think a lot of the regrets that I have when I get back into post is if my shadows are too dark and I'm pulling those up because then I'll get a lot of noise in them. Um, what So what I try to look for is first that, and then once I dial that in, I'll work on the expression itself. I think, I think with photography, it's again, it's why we're creating more than how we're gonna create. And I think if you can get the, the talent and the subject to really emote into the emote into the camera and give that feeling then you it really gives you a lot of flexibility um but for this one i'd probably be looking a little bit more on those shadows if we're going a little bit more dramatic i'd pull it a little bit closer maybe open it up just a little bit more and do uh a, a little bit more shadows on this side of the face but we're that's where we're running into an issue in here with the the big white ceiling and the bouncing. So we're going to move this over just a tiny bit. And I do have a second uh, reflex light behind this that I'll throw in afterwards just to kind of give a little rim light as well. Let me have you look right here. Turn your head just a little bit more. Great. Right. And what's cool about Thurl is he brings a whole wardrobe of costumes. He's probably got thousands of costumes. So if you find a model that is as prepared as Thurl, 
I would hire them in a heartbeat. That's good. Great, let me just check that real fast. There we go. These are a little bit darker than I would like. So I'm gonna bring these up just a tiny bit. So the other thing I would also look for is how sharp they're gonna be and how much detail we're gonna get because uh, shooting at the lower apertures, you kind of run into that shallow depth of field. Um, but that's looking pretty good for what I want on that. And then I'm gonna go here. Great. And you'll notice too, like with Thurl, he tends to uh, move around a little bit, which I don't try to stop at all with, unless there's a specific shot that I'm like, wait, back up, rewind a little bit, or I'll tell them to hold on just a tiny bit. But what I'm looking for as a portrait photographer is I'm looking for something that's more him. So I want him to kind of feel comfortable enough. Unfortunately, you won't get that a lot with a lot of uh, clients or paid clients because they're not models. So they're not, they're not, you know, they're paying you to take their photo. They're not used to being in front of the camera. But when you do get someone like Thurl, you want to kind of vibe with that and let their expertise collaborate with your photos. Let's try is there, that. Is there anything you normally do or advise, Rich, when say you're working with somebody who isn't seasoned like Thurl and isn't comfortable in front of the camera? Is there any tricks you employ to get somebody to get to that comfort level? So typically what I would do is I'd, I'd start joking with them. Um, I, I would ask them about their profession. Um, I'd ask them what they do for fun. Accountants tend to not have a very off like straight out the gate kind of, uh, they're very introverted. So the, the personality is not always there right away, but you uh, just kind of joke with them, let them know that you understand that, that they're not models and that you've worked, that a majority of the people you do work with are not models. Um, and that kind of gets them to relax a little bit too. Another thing too is you don't want to over explain what's going on with this camera. You don't want to talk about your f-stops. You don't want to talk about your shutter speed, because um, that's all. That's like stereo instructions to them. So you want to keep it. I shoot with a with a harness. So when someone walks into my studio, I usually have the camera behind my back. It's usually right here. It's not even in view of the client walking in because they're walking in and they're saying they're gonna, you know, they're already feeling nervous about the shoot. So then I say, you know, we're gonna, this is the process we're gonna do. We're gonna go in, take some photos for 30 minutes, grab a couple of shots. I'll show you some along the way, kind of get them uh, to relax a little bit. One of the biggest challenges with being a photographer that I personally feel is the biggest challenge is that you could technically take the best photo ever, technically. But if a client doesn't like the way their hair looks, that's gonna be the worst photo they've ever had. So, it's our job to make sure that everything's perfect on there. Pay attention to the details. Even if there's not much going on, let them know that you're paying attention to the details because I mean, this these cameras, as soon as someone steps in front of the camera, it's like a confession booth to some people. They just start, oh, I have a lazy eye, I have this, I have, I have this going on. And, and you just gotta make them relax and kind of let them feel like you understand and you've dealt with all of it and you're gonna make them look the best they can. And just being interested in what they do really helps do that. So, all right, let's take a couple more. And I think I'm gonna add in that rim light in a second. I wanna get the pipe in there. Let's try, and I might actually try wrapping this a little bit behind you. Good. I'm gonna have you look, let's do that one where you had the, um, almost the pipe doing the same silhouette as you. Yeah, so bring that finger down just a little bit and we'll, we'll cheat that out. Just, yeah, like that. perfect. And Done. bring it up like, and then we're gonna look almost full profile to where I'll be. Cool, yeah, that looks good. I like the hand there. Great, let me just take a look at that real quick. That's pretty good. Let's do another one like that. 
And again, you guys are seeing raw, straight out of the camera, uh, unprocessed photos. But I'm I'm digging the lighting on that here. That's pretty good. All right, let's go. I like the way this is falling on you. Great. Same thing, a little bit more profile to me. Great. Love it. All right, let me take a look at these. Yeah, so the adjustment that we have on this, I'm bringing down the highlights quite a bit on this one. Um, and typically I would make these adjustments in camera when it's not tethering right to that, uh, the Lightroom there. But that's pretty much what I would be looking for. Let me, uh, I'm gonna put my camera down real quick and I'm gonna pull in this other. What is the program you tethered to? Something this is Lightroom, yeah. Let me grab this other Stella. Pro light here. I love it. Caleb's on it back there with the, I'm like, wow, working overtime. Put, yeah. God, I he's, love it. He's got it. You brought the whole team. All right, let me just make sure. So the cool thing about these Stella Pro, these reflex, is that they you could do hot lights or the digital burst. Um What's really cool about this is is with shooting with hot lights, I have a film degree. So we were trained on hot lights for video, which is always fun because you can actually, what you see is what you get. And then these came out and I was super excited because they, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of high. I'm using the B flat as a mask, but I'll show you what I'm, I'm using here. So this one, I, I'm going to shoot this one on continuous. Um, for a second, let me just pop this in real quick. So this is you, Rich, just like built, you're building out your, building out the scene, I guess you could say, building out the portrait. Correct. So uh, this would, I guess if you're a painter, this would be like layering. So um, I'm starting with that front light and then maybe just to separate him just a little bit, I'll add this one in. Um, just to kind of give me a little bit more of a kicker. So I'll keep this one down pretty low, about half the power that the other one's on as my key light. And I don't have that one really modified. I've got the little dome modification on there, but I also have it masked behind. So let's just see what that does. And this is this is truly me like testing this out, um, you know, just to see what we're getting. Um, let me pop this on. Great. So that's a little hot on on his hair. And since his hair is white, we're gonna get it's gonna pick that up pretty quick. So I'm gonna tone that down about half. And that should be pretty good. So one thing you probably don't want to be doing is to be testing this stuff out when you're being paid by a client. So typically what we do at Spectacle is we require anyone to do, anyone who's a creative with us, they're required to do one personal project a quarter. And what they have to do is they have to, it can't be something that they're used to doing. They have to go above, like outside of their comfort zone. And the whole point is so that they can fail without the risk of owing someone money or giving them a refund. Um, I think a lot of creatives, they wait for their clients to pay them to do cool work. And that puts your clients in complete control of your portfolio. Um, so th th with photographers, there's that struggle of paying the bills and also being an artist. And if all you do is creative uh, personal projects, then you're probably a starving artist. But if all you do is paid work, then you're probably starving your art. So we have to kind of balance those two things. And we try to do that a lot so that we can test these things and then go into the next shoot with the confidence of, okay, if, if I'm in a similar situation, 
I know that I had this with Thorough and we were working through these problems and I know not to make these mistakes again. All right, just like that. Great, let's bring it, turn the, the, um, the pipe out just a tiny bit. Looking it's actually, at the stars, if it gets lost out here, rather than up against the glass. Yeah, it's actually, I, I would bring it out just a little bit. We could cheat it out. I want to get a little bit more light here because I like the way that one's hitting. Zombie, I'm going to bring this up just a tiny bit for you. All right, just like that. I might actually lose this grid in a minute because I'm not, might be cutting this light down a little bit too much on there. I like the way that, there, there we go, that's a lot better. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna wrap that kicker light and then we'll do a couple more shots like that. I'm gonna wrap this this way just a little bit. Perfect. Yeah, cheat it out just a little bit more towards the, yep, and then up just a tiny bit. Yeah, there we go. Great. Awesome. Let's try one with the hat. Yeah, that kicker's still pretty hot. So I would just adjust that. And this this uh, light back here has barely any modifier on it. So you're basically getting just a direct light. That's why we have to keep kicking it down just a little bit. Perfect. This way, or we Let's do most of the, yeah, we're going to, we're going to keep the light mostly to the side here, just so it doesn't bleed as much. Okay. Yeah. And then look right at me, eyes bright into the camera, chin up just a little bit. Let's go right there. I may have killed that kicker light a little too much but I would just boost that up and then kind of work a little bit more on the posing. Cool. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Thorough likes it, so yeah. What's really good is that when you are shooting that I can see the image there. That's interesting. A lot of times when I'm shooting or whatever, somebody, a photographer always has to bring the camera over and says, well, how do you like this? And yeah. Through there, but if you have a monitor on, I can also see where maybe I yeah that makes me that makes me feel more comfortable. Yeah, I can actually see all the way in minute that was that was yeah. That's true. That makes me feel more nervous, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Really? Yeah, only because I like if you're in the setup mode, maybe I would turn that off so you couldn't see it until I was ready to go. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's interesting. Certain little things that I maybe a turn or whatever that I like my you know, yep. looking for a profile more this way where because a lot of people might not like this shape if they're if you're trying to please the customer. Yeah. Because it's like, no, I don't like it like that. But it's like, oh, I see. Maybe if I yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Let's do a couple more like that. Let's go straight on. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. Yeah, let's do that. Chin up just a little bit. Let's drop that hand down. I'm not, that's gonna kind of be floating in there. Yeah, let's go straight on just that. Yeah, that'll be good. Hold that pose for me real quick. I wanna make two adjustments. I'm gonna move the light a little bit further back so it wraps a little bit more here and I'm gonna bring this up just a tiny bit. Yeah, so right here. Great. Do I have that look like the water should have sprayed on my face? Yeah, this actually looks. Uh... 
kind of, yeah, I like the way that, that I can definitely work with. Let's see. Let me try that real quick. I just, there we go. Chin up just a tiny bit. Right. Yeah, I like that one there. Cool. So yeah, that's pretty much what I would do with uh, in this kind of situation. If I had the luxury of a couple more V flats, I'd probably bring them in a little bit closer, maybe one in the back. Um, what would make this even more dramatic is less light on the back, obviously, so that he wasn't that wasn't as light of gray. Um, but with this studio that we're in, it's it's pretty much a light box. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm gonna shoot a couple more. Let's do, uh, is there any questions out there that I can answer while I'm kind of moving this around a little bit? Nothing, nothing right now. If you do have those questions, get them in. Don't sit on them. This is, Rich, is, Rich doesn't mind working and, and talking at the same time, so. I don't, I can talk, man, I think. <laughs> See, you you know what's well you know what's great I, i'm gonna throw something out there it's it's great i love having someone like thorough who is you know not just uh, how, how many times do people just sit there and they feel like they can't talk or if they feel like it's just a one-sided thing and i think building that connection with your model to where they're the fact that thorough is comfortable enough to say i like this or hey what about this or I think having that interaction, it's communication and it ultimately helps you get to your end goal because he's going to be happy with, with the product because he, he kind of has a, um, a stake in it at that point. Correct. And, and that's, that's pretty important too, is again, that's the level that you want when a client just books you online and then comes in, you want to be able to, to help people sit down, get comfortable. The first 20 minutes, I always schedule an hour regardless of what the session is. It's the first 15 to 20 minutes is just getting to know people. I think what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna cut this. I, I think what's spilling a lot into this is my um, my studio light here, which you won't have on location. So I'm gonna go dark for a minute and we're gonna cut this so you have like Down. a model, like a modeling lamp that you're using there. Yeah, which isn't really a modeling light. It's it's for me to be able to be on camera, but I think that's kind of killing some of my shadows here, and it's filling in that background. So I'm gonna readjust a little bit. I'm gonna have you look this way again. Let's go for that silhouette shot real quick, or the profile shot. Let's go there. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that's pretty dramatic. Huh? Oh wow! Yeah, wow. <laughs> so there we go. We got... Everybody yeah. out there on in the internet, you're just gonna have to deal with watching Rich in the dark now. Sorry, guys. That. That's awesome, dude. I mean, look at look at how much that changed the dynamic. So that could be that. Now you may not always have the luxury of doing that. This could represent uh, office lights. So you just have to maybe find a spot in the office that's not going to be. I, I, there's not many clients that are going to hire you specifically. I mean, I would hire a lawyer if they had that headshot. I'd be like, <laughs> wait, what's going on with that guy? It's but, like one of those Las Vegas lawyers on a Let's on try it without the hat, yeah. How, how do you what deal was with that? that, Rich? I said that looks, it's like one of those Las Vegas lawyers that have the, the big billboard stuff. That's yeah. the kind of, that, that attorney would have that. Now, how do you deal with working in, uh, in those situations like that. I mean, when I think office lights, you think those long fluorescent panels and it's just like disgusting light. Does it, are you overpowering? Are you getting that spill from the, from the color? Does it play into your process at all? So most of the time I try to overpower it. Okay. Um, there's sometimes there's not much you can do. Um, it, it, it depends on the office itself. Sometimes I'll request that they give us like an individual room, like a conference room where we can set up. And usually I try to give them reasons why that would benefit the office. So I'll say, hey, we'll be less disruptive if we're off to the side and not around everyone else trying to get work done. And they're usually like, oh yeah, we need our workers working. Um, 
but sometimes you're just limited. If it's too limited, I'll try to convince them to use one of one of the studios that we work out of. Um, and that way we have full control. Um, so it really just depends on, on what they're looking for. A lot of clients will have specific, um, you know, maybe they're switching photographers, but they, they have older uh, employees that don't want to change their headshot. So they'll say, you know, we need, uh, we need it to look like this, which is always a bigger challenge because matching someone else's work that was done in a specific situation, that's actually harder than coming up with a clean look itself. So um, typically I'll look at that and go, okay, well for this, we're going to have to do this and this, but okay. let's try a couple more like that. I like, yeah, I'm going to have you look at, let's do like face right here. Yeah. Chin out just a little bit. Great. And let's see now, just so you guys know, like I typically shoot a lot faster than this. I'm not always turning around looking. It's just, uh, when you're tethering, it takes off all previews on the camera. Mm. Oh, I like that. That looks awesome, man. What are your What are your general settings at, Rich? Is there an, an area like Do you normally go with like an f eight to start? Did you ever shoot wide open? So I I was on that f eight or f uh, I'm sorry I was on that f one point eight kick for a real long time. Um, switching back or switching to the mirrorless now, I'll probably uh, hang out in that spot a little bit more. Um, with, I was shooting with a D850 for a while and I was just missing a lot. I was getting a lot of soft photos just because of the, the at one, 1 1.8, if you inhale, you're completely different focal plane. So, uh, now I've been shooting a lot more commercial stuff. So I've been shooting a lot higher around an F8, um, nothing below like a five, six. So, and then typically uh, with me, I'm kind of a, I tend to live at a hundred ISO all the time. Um, with the newer cameras, I've been venturing off of that, knowing that they can handle it. Um, but for some reason I have it ingrained in my head. Don't go off of a hundred just because I was, you know, I started basically at the beginning of the digital uh, photography boost in the beginning. So a lot of that was a lot of noise. But um, I usually live around 100 ISO. Shutter speed kind of varies. So, okay. All right. That'll be good. That one's going to be good. I can feel that one. Feel it in my bones. That's good. That rim light's a little hot. I'm going to tone that down just a little bit. We are good. How you feeling, Thurl? Very good. Need a drink or anything? All right. Thank you. I'll take a whiskey and soda. A whiskey and soda. I don't know if Gary has any of that here. <laughs> Have you found go going back to that thing? You, you got me thinking over here, Rich. Going back to the the thing, I was actually. It makes me think of some portraits I did a little while back, and I found when when shooting a similar setup like this, where you have you know, you have that key light and then you have that opposite, you have that, that backlight or that, that rim light or accent light. When I shoot with a, a richer, deeper depth of field, it's grab because I have more detail from the front of the face to the back of the head, it's holding the light better. If that makes sense. When you go with the shallow depth of field, it looks muddy or that light, it goes from a rim light to just kind of like a weird halo ish. And I think, you know, is it, it does that, makes sense does that sound about i agree i so i i was photographing a subject the other day and i went to a 1.8 and he had some hot lights behind him it was for some bts shots on a on a show and i i was looking at it and it i felt the same way i know exactly what you're talking about where the rim light kind of turns into its own thing yeah. um i've been doing uh competition with uh, competitive photography for the PPA and they really teach you how to like not be hypercritical but look at things that where your eye will be drawn to so for instance the photo that's that's uh on here to cut to that real quick your eye instantly goes to the back of his head because it's the brightest point yeah. so kind of toning that down and making sure that that's not the focal point because you want it to go towards his eyes 
Um, but if if it's anything like that where it's too soft, then yeah, you're gonna it's gonna stand out. But yeah. I, I get what you're great, saying. It's it's yeah, it's go ahead. that balance. Yeah, totally. And, and and I'm glad you bring that up about that because I think a lot of people, I think sometimes when especially when people are newer to off camera lighting, they get enamored with like this is dynamic lighting. When you first look at it, it's like wow, look at that, like the nice triangle under the eye and. And obviously his look helps sell it. Like he's just got like a really stoic camera ready look, but you have to learn to be critical and you kind of get away from that being enamored with just the dynamic lighting to look at, okay, is it, it's dynamic, but is it, where's my eye going? Is my eye going to the right spot? And is the lighting hitting the way I want it to hit? It's similar to how like, you know, when people get their first DSLR and they're like, wow, everything's out of focus in the background. It's a great shot. And then you, the more you learn, you're like, okay, that isn't what makes a great photo. I got to do more work at it. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's why I think personal projects are, are super important for creatives is that it allows you to grab these lights and test that stuff and figure out what you do and don't like. Because here's what happens is it naturally, if someone hires you for a headshot, that they, let's say they, you took a headshot of someone else and they saw that headshot and they loved it. So they're going to call you up and say, we love Bill's headshot. We want that. So you're going to do that. You're going to play it safe. You're going to give them what you gave Bill. And then Amy's going to see his and there's Amy's going to say, I want that. So you're going to do that. You're going to play it safe. And then you're building a portfolio of safe, clean headshots, which is good. But how do you create opportunities for Let's say someone in Alaska is like, hey, we want headshots, but we also want you to follow our clients around and take wildlife photos of them fishing and, and doing a bunch of stuff. You have to be able to say, yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Here's some work that I've created to that can justify that stuff as well. So I think too many creatives, they, again, they put too much, um, they rely too much on their clients for their portfolio when really they should have more control over it and saying, you have to show your clients what they want. Every time I've done a personal project, even if I've completely failed at it, it's always created new work for me and created new clients because I'm willing to take those risks on those shoots and confidently say, I have experience doing this in this situation. Here's how we're going to do it. So mm -hmm. I, I think really, if you're waiting on your clients to uh, give you those experiences like you're talking about, figuring out what kind of lighting you like or how soft you like the rim light, you're gonna be waiting forever because your client's only gonna hire you to do what, what they think you can handle. So let's do a couple more. I'm gonna have you go a little bit closer to, actually, I liked how you were leaning towards, kind of towards the, the V flat. I like that, yeah, let's try that. Yeah, I'm going to wrap this just a little bit more this way. Good. Bring your eyes. So I have this thing with eyes. Yep. I, <laughs> eyes are a good thing. Yeah. If, if they're too far to the side, I totally. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try that. They're coming for you, Thurl. Yeah, that's pretty cool. See, I can see that with like a lighthouse photoshopped in the background, like pretty cool. All right, let's do a couple more. Great. What about right here? Dramatic, huh? Great. So on that one, it looks like, and sometimes it's funny too, because sometimes I know that some lights and these these don't really have a delay ever. Um, it's very rare that they misfire. On like my Godox lights, when they misfire, sometimes I'll use that to my advantage. So I'll shoot real quick. So I know that the back one takes longer to charge. And I'll shoot real quick and I'll get two shots that, so it's basically using the limitations of that light to give me a little bit more variety in the shots, but that's pretty cool right there. Yeah. Cool. 
Any uh, any cool questions coming in? You know, I, I actually have a, another question on that. How do you deal with, you're obviously the professional. We talked before about Thoreau having that, that feedback. Now, say you have somebody who isn't a professional, but they're very opinionated. How do you bridge the gap between, I'm the professional, but at the same time, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable or make you feel that your opinion is not valued. But say you, I'm, I'm sure you've had an experience where you've had somebody who's very opinionated and gives almost either tries to give you direction or tries to or, you know, tell you, you know, hey, what about this or what about that? How do you stay in your flow while letting them know, like, I got this? It so it's it's kind of like a I hate to say it's like winging it but it, it kind of is depending on the person. So I usually, you'll get some people that come in and they just want to talk about, I, I joke sometimes we're like therapists because they'll come in and they want to talk about all their problems. And I guess uh, other professions that have similar situations would be like hairstylists or barbers. Like, like you tell them you're, you know, you're sitting there telling them your story while you're waiting. Um, I, I try not to fall into, well, so some things I'll do if someone's like, you you know, they'll say, oh, I don't like the way my face looks here. I don't like the way this happens. Um, sometimes I walk them through and I say, well, there's, you know, there's a science behind that. You know, most people are used to seeing themselves in the mirror. And when you see a photo of yourself, it's actually reversed or flipped. Um, so typically that's why you don't like that. That's why a lot of people like those selfie uh, pictures because it's actually a reversed image and it looks more like a mirror. Um, or I'll tell them, you know, with their chin, I'll, 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 I tell them that I know secrets on or tricks of the trade on how to, uh, make them look good. Cameras don't have any depth. So you can bring your chin out and it gives you this awesome jawline. Um, and really it's just a matter of just keeping them relaxed. It, and it's funny cause it's really not like, you would think it would be more females than males when it comes to like being in front of the camera and being so specific about their look, but really like males are super critical about their look in front of the camera. Um, and I find that that's a little bit more challenging when you're like, okay, listen, we want you to, we want these to be dramatic. Obviously I wouldn't light uh, most females in this situation because they, they wouldn't like the texture on the face. Um, so sometimes showing them those photos will ease their mind and they'll be like, okay, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. The other challenge that we run into as photographers is everything on my website has been retouched and processed and, and really fine tuned. But when they come and photograph with me and they see this on my screen right now, you guys are seeing raw photos. This is a fraction of what will actually come out of this shoot. So another thing is convincing them that None of these photos will look like the photos on your website, but all of the photos on my website used to look like this. So kind of guiding them through that as well. We've we've realized a while ago with photography that if clients are coming to you and, and having this experience over and over again, that it's something that you need to change as a photographer or a professional. It's not just on those people. So how do you communicate these steps and processes to your clients to make sure that they don't keep doing that? Um, so that kind of helps too, is just being as open and honest as possible and, and walking through the process, just not technically. I'm not going to be like, well, you see, I'm going to shoot you out of 1.8. We're going to hit you with a ton of light. Um, so we just try to keep it very like down to earth and, and relatable to them. So, yeah. All right, awesome. let's take a couple that. more. And I think we're good with this one. Let's try the hat again. It's gonna kill our rim light, but that's pretty cool. What about like right here? A lot of my photos, I don't know, it, like they're always looking off camera. I think that's like the cinematic feel, but how about eyes right here? Yeah, this has more of like a, eh? maybe like a criminal look. Maybe it's the striped shirt. Oh, that's Rich, pretty cool. Rich, we got a technical question that fits that image right there. Cindy on Vimeo is asking, how are you getting the darker background? So I'm getting the darker background by using this grid here. Um, so we're we're just channeling the light directly 
to the subject. Uh, before we were getting a lighter background because of the hot lights were really affecting it in here. And then um, this V flat is is really just doing a negative fill on the side of thorough space here. Um, but the dark background is because there's barely any light hitting the back. Actually, I would assume if I were just to look at this, that there would be no light hitting that background. But because this studio is so white, we're still getting a little bit of, of light back there, which I don't mind because I don't want it to go completely black. Um, this This will actually give me the ability to cut him out and maybe add a little bit of texture on the background. I thought about bringing in like a painted background for this shoot, but then it would have been against what the actual title of the, the presentation was, was to keep it simple and create dramatic lighting when I can go in and just kind of add a little bit of texture and post, maybe a concrete wall or, or some kind of painterly feel. But um, the background's dark because we're just really, it's because of this grid here and we're limiting that light. Let's do that. I like that look though. Bring your hand down again. That's going to block all your light. Yep. What if you did, uh, yeah, actually, I, so, yeah. Right into the camera for me. Cool. I keep looking at the back of my camera, guys, and there's nothing there. This is, it's throwing you for a loop, the, this whole tethered thing. It is. I, I am not a tether guy. Man, that looks pretty cool. Go straight on just like that. Yeah. Nice. That has like a Peaky Blinders feel to it there. What? What? Did he just say what? <laughs> This is who, what? Peaky Blinders, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had lunch here. Yeah. Hey, that's a good smile. Yeah. That's good. All right, let's do a dead serious one. I want you to drop your, uh, fix your color so it's symmetrical. Oh, we lost the light. Hold on. Can bring this in. So I think we need to lower this just a little bit because you're bringing. That's a, so with hats, you got to be careful too because they're going to do what they're designed to do, which is the block light. I got this. I got this. Don't worry. It's all good. Go like right here. Good. Straight on. We're going to go dead center, symmetrical. Good. Let's see what that looks like. The right wing. No, you did good. Back this off just a little bit. So I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of like band cruises, and cruise cruise ships have a lot of really cool different location setups because um, they're usually themed. And with these lights, we can grab these, bring them down into one of these areas, grab some people walking by or a band member, um, and get portraits like this while we're actually there doing event photography as well. And having this down to where we can create these dramatic light lighting situations real quick, make it a lot easier for these bandmates that are not there to take portraits. They're there to, they're there to perform. Um, it makes it so they're really quick and we can grab these really cool shots and be done. And they, they can go on with their life after, you know, 10 minutes of just shooting with us real quick. Typically what I would do in those situations is I'd find a spot, um, pre-light it with Caleb, and then be ready to go as soon as we can grab that person and say, okay, I just need a real quick shot, bring it over here and have it ready to go. He's getting undressed now, so, all right.
Let's do one more straight on. Yeah. I think I'm going to put your whole like right side of your face into a shadow. Let's see what that looks like. Just a little bit of light. Cool. Yeah, let's drop that hand. Drop the hand. Yep. I wonder if I got a little bit, I'm gonna get a little bit closer. I wanna do like, almost like look, I want you to look like right here. Far. Bring your head up just a little bit. I have no idea what this was gonna look like. That's what I was gonna say. I'm yeah. <laughs> but I don't want you to look into the camera. I want you to look, I'm gonna go for like a, I'm gonna go for a Peaky Blinders look. You know exactly what that is, yeah. Right here, bring your eyes right there. Let's try that. Yeah. And I'm going to do one more like that, but I'm going to give myself a little bit more room on this cable. Shooting with a cable. What do you think? You're going you're gonna to give it a shot after this, Rich? Is it nice at least seeing a larger image and being able to look and make sure you're hitting? It It is. So I've always wanted to shoot tethered. It's just most of the situations I'm in don't justify doing it but it is awesome to be able to see it and be like okay this mm -hmm. is what i could adjust but my only concern is that it takes me away too much from the subject but um i think if i practiced more on it i would i would that wouldn't be the case i would glance at it and just move on mm -hmm. so and and yeah. rich we had another question come in from tina on Vin vimeo uh, saying you you said that you normally would not be using V flats on location if you're you know you're keeping it to a minimum. What is your setup like on a normal? So a normal you don't have V flats. What do you normally bring with you or use? So normally I would have it a bare minimum. My bare minimum would be one light, typically a uh, uh, what is that one like a thirty four inch octobox uh a but with a beauty dish mod in it and that's my go-to i could pretty much light almost anything with one light so if i wanted to fill this room with light i would just take the light off of him and bounce it off the ceiling and create i'd turn the whole room into a a soft box um so you don't always have to point the light at the subject either you can have if you have an assistant with you you can point the light at them or at their white shirt and they become a diffused version of the light. So if there is a green wall, you can bounce the light off of there and it'll look like a green gel. Um, you also have a pop-up uh, mobile version that you can really stand. But of the, like oh yeah. So you could use a, you can also use a reflector as well. Um, so my I I'm completely mobile with my studio. Um, I use a, I I borrow other people's studios or rent other people's studios. So a lot of this stuff is what can fit into the back of my car. The V flats are good for setup in studio, and even in studio they take a lot of beating. Um, they're just not durable enough or reliable enough to bring on location most of the time. There have been situations where I'm like, man, a V flat in this situation would be awesome. Um, you also have to keep in mind your clients aren't always going to be as picky as you're going to be, and they're not going to notice the shoulda, coulda, woulda as much as you will. Um, but you could also, if with a V flat, if you were going for a negative fill and you knew it was a tight space, you can bring a black material that you can hang on the wall um, and just get creative with what you're using for that. But my typical go-to is one light, at least one light, um, a stand, and then a modifier. So, okay. And Tina followed yeah. up. What uh, what f stop are you shooting at right now? So this is an f two. Um, I would probably. I mean, I I would go to a one point eight on this one. It might look pretty cool. Let me try that. 
let's get crazy. <laughs> let's get crazy. I love, I love it. I love. Let's go. I want. I want to do that look again, but I'm going to get a little bit more of your hat because I want that to be super soft. But I need your chin up just a tiny bit. Bring your shoulders this way just a little bit. Yeah, and then chin up just a little bit, and your eyes are going to go right here. Let's try that. Now that shirt's going to pick up a lot of light, but we're going to let's see what happens. I can button back up. See? It's just going to, oh, wait, what? Hold on one second. <laughs> wow. Is that, is that the shirt? That's what we were going for. That's yeah, the look. Yeah, that's, it. that's a keeper. Blow it up. I, I did that on purpose. <laughs> Whoa, that looks cool. Man. That's cool. See in there. I have the, to write a movie about this. The, the shallow depth of field works there. Let me go vertical. I'm gonna go. Let's try this. So that's a 1.8. I like the horizontal. The horizontal is way more cinematic. Go a little bit lower. And then I just with your eyes shift them right into the lens, and just relax them just a little bit. So a little, yeah. There we go. Boom! Looks like he looks like a famous actor. No, I'm not doubting you. Never, never. You know what's funny is it's like we we see Theral on on camera there and it's like it's totally when the when you go to take the picture it's like he just turns it on and it's, it's like he goes from like fun, loose, laid back to like game time, stoic like at the flick of a wrist it's like yeah and it's funny because Theral is probably the most sought after model in our area and everyone has shot I feel like everyone's photograph with you um i shoot maybe four to five days a week he's wow. constantly working and the range though is like uh, it's it's really like a chameleon thing because sometimes i see it and i'm like oh okay i didn't know that was him <laughs> and then other times i'm like oh and when i saw him online i was like i gotta get this guy in front of my camera um so it's it's my biggest thing is like creating something unique that no one else has done, even though other people have photographed this outfit um, with him, including myself, but shooting it in a way that that kind of fills his portfolio to where it's not just another throwaway shot or just keep going. So um, yeah, but if I saw someone, if I, if I saw Thurl sitting at Wawa eating a sandwich, I would stalk you and ask you to take this photo of you. <laughs> Like totally would be like, I need to get this picture. I need to get this guy's portrait. And I would have just tracked him down. But, but so. A lot of times when people go through my portfolio, they go, what do you wear? What do you do when you're not working? Yeah. <laughs> this is what he does. This is it. I love that shot though. Rich, we're going to have to send, we're going to have to send issue a challenge. We're going to send you to a random Wawa in the, in South Jersey and see what you can come up with on the fly. So, yeah, I was actually, it's, that story was partially true. I was at a Wawa, saw a guy eating his macaroni and cheese. And before he even gave me permission to take his photo, I was already setting up my little studio setup out of my car because I was going to approach him after he was done. And I did, I, he, so he got up, he walked away. This photo is on my Instagram, by the way. It's a, it's an older gentleman. The, the storm was coming in. So I grabbed my little light and, uh, I threw it, he walked away and I grabbed my light, threw it in the car, cut, like cut down the road and kind of predicted where he was going to stop. And I hopped out and I was like, sir, can I take your portrait? And he was like, what are you crazy? And I was like, it's, I'm a photographer. This isn't weird. I mean, it's kind of weird. And he was like, yeah, sure. I got five shots with him, five stills and he looked i go here look and he looks at it and he goes okay and then turns away like turns and walks away and that and those are the photos that would have haunted me 
Like I would think about that photo over and over again. So um, knowing how to quickly set this stuff up and knowing your settings allows you to focus on why you're going to be creating. And I had this photo in my mind. Thank God he let me take his photo because I was, I would have been like, oh. Good experience the last time. That's where, this is our second time. Yeah. And that's where, well, even the first time, I feel that you made me feel comfortable enough, you know, that, that I yeah. agree with this again. And There's a range of people out there, and I'm sure you get them all the time, people contacting you and saying, hey, come out. And you're kind of like, ah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, cool. This, this was awesome, Rich. I, I really want to thank you. We have uh, one last question here that we're going to throw at you that has to do with posing. So Tina on Vimeo again asking, what about not having a subject look at the camera is compelling for you? So why, why do you like that looking off camera look? So I think it has to do with my film background and breaking that fourth wall. So um, it, it, unless it's Ferris Bueller's day off or it's some cheesy gimmick, <laughs> people usually don't look at the camera um, in movies. And a lot of what I shoot is very cinematic and, and uh, even like I can already picture how this is going to be toned and color graded. It's going to be very cinematic and it's not going to be that traditional portraiture. So that's probably why I have them look off. It, it changes the whole dynamic of that a, like in a business headshot, you would want them looking at the person. You want them speaking to the person. You want them approaching that person. When it comes to like a cinematic look, if he's in, if I'm picturing him in a storm, he's not going to be looking at this camera. He's going to be gazing just off the camera at what's coming, right? It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be at the viewer. So I, I think it's just a form of storytelling that you just have to kind of play around with. But most of my photos are very rarely do I have people look directly into the camera. I will get those shots, but if it's something like this where I'm doing something dramatic or um, it's usually looking off to the side. Awesome. Well, so. we love it. Some some beautiful images. I, I still love the fact that you just kind of popped up, did it on the fly. It wasn't you know, I think it sells it more to people that it, it really is doable. And it's really just about taking things as they come and, and working with what you have and working on the fly, addressing problem solution as you're doing it. And every situation is going to be different. I know we threw a lot of questions at you today that were, you know, they were worded gen in a general manner. But when it comes down to an actual answer, it's very situational. It depends on what you have at your disposal at the time. So I want to thank you, Rich, for really just given us a wealth of knowledge today and, and showing us sometimes showing is proving and you really demonstrated that today. So huge. Thank you to you, Caleb, Earl, the whole team over there. Um, want to thank all you guys for, for coming and joining us today to Janine and the entire Stella pro team. want to thank you as well, Rich, where can we yes, find more of your you. work? What was that? Where, where can we find more of your work? Oh, so it's uh, everything online is at spectacle photo. Wonderful. So make sure you guys go check Spectacle Photo out and Thorough. Thorough, you got a page? Um, my best way to find me is just still on Facebook. Um, you can also just even just Google my name. That's like he said, I'm out there so much. If you just Google my name, Thorough, up, you'll find me. And if you go to my Instagram, photos of him are tagged on there as well. So, awesome. yeah. There you go. His inbox is going to be filling up. Everyone's going to be, or yeah. I might be. We got to book him. Picking. There you go. So he, he's going to be not safe in the the Wawa parking lot. Somebody's going to go there for a sizzly and end up for the photo shoot. So Maybe I need to go to Wawa's now. You need to go to Wawa. Yeah. There you go. I'm, I'm going to be hanging out at Wawa's for now. On. Who knew? Well, guys, thank you so much. Huge thank you again to Janine and Stella Pro team. That's all we got for today. Another rendition of the VNH Virtual Event Space is in the books. We'll catch y'all next time.